Uh, Blink Twice. I absolutely loved this film. It came out last week, uh, certainly in the yeah. UK. And I almost give it five stars. I, yeah, you same. know, sometimes you just something in your in your head that says, no, no, it's not. It may be four and a half if I would if I gave four and a half, but it's a solid, solid four stars. I loved it. Um, it's uh, the basic premise is two girls. Uh, Chana Tatum is this rich billionaire um, tech mogul. You know, he's um, good looking. He's got this island, and he invites these two sort of nobody girls to onto his island and it's a bit of a story of fish out of water where they're having a taste of celebrity life they're having champagne in this island getting pampered and he's like really, really lavish and he's meditating and doing drugs in the night and it is but you can sense there's something off about it um yeah no and, matter how beautiful that place is you know yeah. something's off like yeah i think you watched it friday didn't you yeah oh i absolutely love this film and what's really special about this one and it, it does play into those holiday movies is it's it's a slow burn but it's got it's got the location on its side you're enjoying seeing these people on this island Channing Tatum gives one of the best performances I've ever seen because he's usually typecast in these dumb jock type roles yeah. you know and he's a little bit stupid but he is great in this movie playing like a Jeffrey Epstein type character. Yes. It is just insane. And a lot of times I was watching it and I was like, I don't even know if this is Channing Tatum or not. Like I forgot I was watching Channing yeah. Tatum because he just completely transformed into this role. Yeah. Um, yeah. As soon as the girls start realizing something's wrong, like I won't say too much about it, but one of them wakes up with a bruise on her arm and then she's got dirt under her nails and you know, something terrible is happening to these girls. But yes, Epstein Island vibes. And after watching this film, I already knew I was terrified of billionaires, but this <laughs> film really plays into that trope. Billionaires are scary because some of them have kinks. They've but when got... they've got the money to live out those... And the, pa and the power. Yes, exactly. It's scary. And this yeah. film really plays into that. It's, and yeah. Zoe Kravitz directed it. Um, she was yeah. recently Selena Kyle in The New Batman. Yeah. Um. It's got to be one of the best directional debuts ever. She goes up there mm. with John Peel with Get Out, Quentin Tarantino, Reservoir Dogs, some of Man's Scorsese's and, films. Like, yeah. And the thing yes. is, you're saying about Get Out, it has got Get Out vibes. Uh, yes, definitely. I, I wouldn't yeah. say it's a rip off by any means, but it's got those no. beats. Um, it's just, if you like Get Out, you you love this because it's just yeah. something sinister looking into all the, the cast are great as well. Yes, uh, Christian that... Slater. It's, nice. it's always nice to oh. see Christian Slater. Yes, and uh, yeah, and I like the actress, uh, the lead actress. Well, the the lead actress, uh, there's one uh, the girl. I've forgotten her name now. She's the girl from um, uh, oh, what's that? T a, a comedy show. It's called Arrested Development. Have you ever seen that? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, She's yeah. I, I never that. finished it, but I, yeah, yeah, it's I good. Never finished uh, it. No, I like the cast. I'm not sure the. <laughs> What's the the pretty girl? No, the one she, uh, the main the didn't like at the start, but they become friends. She was in that film Hitman the other day. Yes, very very beautiful. Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. she's in Mobius as well. Uh, she's yeah, really good. She's yeah. popping up she was a lot great of stuff. In there. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She like, was really good in Hitman as well. And she's pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Yeah, but as I said, Dan, my wife just popped up to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like angry emoji. That's right. Hey, That's why I played it safe. You're in trouble, yeah. <laughs> She's, like, She's all right. <laughs> She's absolutely <laughs> stunning. Uh, no, I, I highly recommend this film. Like I said, if you like it, uh, Get Out, I love Get Out. I love films where I think I might have mentioned it before. No, when you, not so much with Get Out, but no, with this is like a holiday that goes wrong. So, yeah. um, the best of holidays. Yeah, so I think what makes that great, a little, very much like Jaws, that you're having the height of fun, uh, you know, playing on the beach, and you just yeah. think, oh, something horrible is going to happen. You go on holidays, you're partying, whatever, and then you're thinking, someone's going to steal my kidney. Uh, you know, like that film you, you talked about. Paradise you, Lost, yeah. I watched, I've yeah. seen it before, but when you mentioned it on your list, I watched it again. Uh, and it's I, good, it's, isn't it? It's fair, it's still uh, yeah. Good. I, I yeah. watched it and I forgot about it. And I mixed I even mixed it up with the, the Chris Hemsworth film he did. And I forgotten that film again. Though. Yeah, it was it was um 
Oh, I can't remember now. Yeah. I, I named her the last one. Yeah, man. I'm sure yeah, it, it is similar. Anyway, but uh, I love those films because there's something about taking the audience to like heights of excitement, having fun to bring them crashing down, like like Hostel, uh, where yeah. they've got this sort of these sirens bringing you on to this to the hostel of beautiful women, and then the next scene they get cut up. Um, yeah, and you know, I I I felt I felt everything they felt in that film, and. I at at some points I actually couldn't wait to finish it because I felt so uneasy because In of what blink. those girls go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just horrible. And soon as you realise like how much danger these girls are in, and yeah. this were this phrase gets thrown around so much, like I was on the edge of my seat. I literally was because I couldn't relax until those girls mm. were safe because <clears throat> it's that's that that's why I give this movie such high praise because of how it made me feel internally yes. because I wanted nothing more than for those girls to get off that island because they really build them up well. You fall in love with these girls. You like the characters. They're they're written perfectly. Zoe yeah. Kravitz just knocked this film out she of the park. It. And then once things start going wrong in this film, I've I can't remember the last time I felt that uneasy uh, yes. watching a horror film. It's uh, it's like uh, like Handmaid's Tale where you you want to kill all the men that are treating these women like like yes. handmaids. If you ever watch Handmaid's Tale, there's no one percent where you you don't want to get a machine gun and shoot these bastards and and help the prisoners. Um, not to not, not to shit on one of your films again, but that's one of the reasons why I I didn't feel the same about A Quiet Place Day One. It was a well made film, but I just didn't care if they lived or died. It was like, yeah, but with these, like you said. I was getting You're just stressed. Hapless, Jenks. I was getting stressed. I just thought, oh, this is horrible. How are they gonna get out to this island in the middle of nowhere? Uh and, yeah. you know, the but it's, you need to buy into these characters. That's the main thing a director needs to do when they write a script. I'm speaking here as if I'm a professional. Like <laughs> I've written five half scripts in my life, right? But <laughs> they're all shit. When <laughs> when you're writing a script. Before you've got anything, a good story, a good kick, you know, a great arc, like you need to build up likable characters, especially if you're going to put them through hell. You yeah. need to sell the audience on these characters for you to be in there with them. If you don't give a shit about anyone, you're not going to care. And regardless of how good the twist is or how good the, the villain is, if you don't care about those 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 characters in the film, you're not going to care. Yeah. Heart on the right. Uh, do you know what? Is... I, th I think they're having a conversation, you know, back and forth, like. <laughs> oh, do you know what? That's my wife now. I, I'm too slow reacting to these. <laughs> so crap, yeah. I know uh, what she's reacting she's giving to. Me, she's giving me know. shit. <laughs> um, I know what she's reacting to. Do you know, do you know what it is with Chan and Tatum? So Chan and Tatum's career started off using some shitty dance film called Step Up or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. and the one with um, uh, Amanda Bynes. She's the man, remember? Oh, you probably wouldn't have seen that to be honest. Uh, well, I do like a chick flick, but I, I, I think I might have seen. I know of it. Didn't she get? Yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. kick a football into a into a nuts, but she forgets to react. Yes, that's it. Yes, yes quite yes, funny yeah. scene. She's in love with Shannon Tate, and he plays in the football team. Um, so I think what may really made Shannon Tate um, uh, is Twenty One Jump Street, where people realised, oh my god, this guy's really funny. He's not just yeah. good looking. He's got a real funny bone. Um, oh, definitely. And um, and then I think that I think without that film, without that trajectory, Tarantino no one of Adam in his film. You know, Tarantino yes, has high yes. high praise. When you get the call yes. from Tarantino, even if it's a shit part, you take it. You know, it was an important part, though. I feel like the film revolved around Channing Tatum. Obviously, we're talking about the hateful eight. Channing Tatum turns up at the end, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, it's not a very. Um, it's the worst worst kept secret ever. Waiting for one man, and he's in the credit, and Chan and Tate them. Is, where is he? Oh, I wonder when he's coming out. It's it's like um, it's like having Kevin Spacey come up at the start of Seven. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Where's Kevin Spacey then? Oh yeah, okay, we know he's the killer then. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I think he's great, and uh, you're right about billionaires. You you know Freddy Krueger's oh, monster, and you can try and shoot them or whatever. But billionaires, they're too powerful. They're, you know, it's not just the money. They yeah. they have a lot of power. They have a lot of pull. With they're worse than criminals in some ways. You know, because they they can make phone calls and make horrible things happen. Oh. You know, just and that's what's that's what's extra scary about this film is because the girls know how much power these people have. They know how much danger they're in, 
So yeah. the kind of plan that they have to do is, right, we need to keep hush about this and we need to just keep going day to day. Like, yeah, because, I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I tell you, this is a good image, actually, of the contrast of this film. So that's like one of the first pictures yeah. when they get there. And oh, and then, you're loving life for this and point. And then I love it. Just the just those yeah. two shots. You know, you can just see, yeah, this is awesome. It's got some good humor. But, and Hayley Joel Osmelt is in it. I yeah. I actually lo I love him as a, as a grown-up actor now. He's become a yeah. very quite a cool character. Like, do you know what my girlfriend said about him? It's like his his head grew, but his face didn't. It stayed in the same place. I was like, yes, <laughs> I've never been able to explain it that well before. I was yeah. like, that's exactly what happened. But when I watched this film, I wanted I wanted his sunglasses. He had did he have heart sunglasses? I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I just thought. I love stupid head sunglasses. You you couldn't pull those off. You couldn't pull them off. Uh, what are you trying to say? Because they... I'm trying to say you look crap with glasses on. Cheap You've never glasses. been good with glasses. No, no. Hats I'm... and glasses. Glasses, I'm all right. Hats, not so much. Yeah. I'm you know, we were in Lanzarote and you were wearing a pair of shades and see the looks you got behind your back. <laughs> well, because they are those big novelty ones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yes. B a big praise for this film. Highly recommend yes. it. Um, Massively recommend. I think this it one. might still be in the cinema. Um, but yeah. And ju again, just before we move on, it's quite rare. But when I was watching this, right from the first beat, I just thought, oh, I'm really enjoying this film. You have that feeling. Oh, very definitely. Quick. Yes. Do you know? I'll give a film a big chance. So you're talking. You're you're in. And bear in mind, I never turn a film off. It's very rare. You need to give yourself about 20 minutes to really get into it. But sometimes when a film starts and from like the first few frames, you're in, yeah. you know you're in for a good ride. But yeah. sometimes they're the ones that end up letting you down the most because you're so engrossed in the movie. And then when you get those awful endings, I think they end up being the worst films then yeah. because they kind of, they, they need to live up to your expectations of you actually viewing it for the first time. Yeah, because you know like, this film is a good example of, you don't need like a flashy opener to get you going. You just need a just good pacing and yeah. uh, and just have that sense. Well, there's no dread at the start. You just feel like where the story's going, uh, yeah, that, yeah. That, you know, and it sets it up really, really well. Uh, I right. Uh, let me just read his comments. Uh, I've heard so much, uh, Tyler Ad, I've heard so much about 21 Jump Street movies of Charnham. I finally put it on the other day and I turned it off after about maybe seven minutes. The humor wasn't working for me. I'll have to Do you try know again. what? <gasps> it, it's got a particular humour, and if you're not into frat boy humour, you're probably not going to like it, in all fairness. But I love yeah. 21 Jump Street. The sequel's a little bit disappointing. It's not yeah. terrible. It's watchable, but, but it's... Yeah. yeah. Like, when I watch 21 Jump Street, I'll always watch 22, because, you know, yeah. they're, they're, it's, it's good enough. But we almost got MIB 23. It was going to be a crossover between Men in Black and 21 Jump Street, which That's... I want to see because that just sounds nuts. <laughs> but you know, I want to see where that would have gone. Do you know the problem with 20, 22 Jump Street was that the brilliance of the first one was the switch of roles. So Chan Tatum was all, all of a sudden not popular and he actually enjoying with the nerds. And he was the pot. And then Jonah Hill was popular. And he was having the the story. but then the second one, he becomes the jock again. And then again, you're missing the point of the prem. You know, yeah, as of if, course. It's a bit like a Hangover. Hangover one is brilliant because it's a stag that goes wrong, but everything that goes wrong will make a great anecdote. In number two, things that go wrong are too horrible and dark that you you know <laughs> the, a, yeah. the kid loses it's finger. That's not funny, you know. He's a kid like. And 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 what's his face? Bradley Cooper gets shot. It's like, how is that funny? That's that's just horrible. You'd be traumatized. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, you got a good point. Right. Shall we move on? Have you got anything else to say? No, no, other than uh I highly recommend this film. It's still in cinema, it's doing well. The critics are loving it. I loved it, and most more importantly, fuss pot by you liked it. So you probably <laughs> will. High praise, high praise. <laughs> 